Because sometimes you don't want it plumb, you, you might just want it straight, you know. But what you want to try and do is make sure you get all your joints as flat as you can. Obviously, once it's all finished, you will rasp this down anyway and get it to a flat, even surface all the way across. Right See, I always overcut the mesh because it's always you're not trying to squip fit it in there, right. and then you can just literally trim it all up after. And what you got on your joints, just going to say to get the nose of the trowel, just run it down that edge. And what you're doing is taking any excess of gear off there. So that when you put your next bit of mesh on it, it has to have an 100 mil overlap on it. That's to help with your crack resistance and things like that. So as you can see, it gives you a mark roughly mm -hmm. where the overlap should be, yeah? On there like that, make sure you're maintaining it all the way down, straight down, straight through the, just to get it on. Same again, before you start trying to flatten anything and trim everything up. Oh, in the back pocket. I'll stall that. Thank you very much. I'd have been there for ages with it for that. <laughs> okay, there's obviously, crowd it all in. I mean, there is a lot of gear. I mean, obviously, you're, it's something that you'll gauge as you're working with it, the thickness of how much you want to get on, etc. The blue has to disappear, the iron hair. Sorry? Is it after the blue has to disappear? Yeah, you have to get it covered up as much. Yeah, and then the finish, finish on the next one. Yeah, the finish will go on after. But obviously, it's just getting there's quite a lot of gear on yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. 
No, it's good. At the end of the day, you know. Business. I've never really used lots of machines, so I don't. Don't get me for cost effectiveness. No. It's obviously fine. Get it all embedded in there. Yeah, you've got to try and get it as flat as you can. Yeah. And then what I tend to use is a spatula. And then what you can do is just leave it as you can. Guys, on prices, I think. I mean, obviously, you can see without the rasping of the ball zone, you see the joints coming through and all that. But the idea is get that as flat as you possibly can before you put any gear on it. What do you mean? You don't get the joints coming through when you rush? No. Obviously, that because obviously where we boarded it, that would all be rasped back down to one even plane then. So yeah. you don't get the joints in it. Yeah. How do you rasp it then? We do it by hand or? No. We've got a machine that. You can pretty much just stand on the wall. Oh, right. okay. well, it just rubs off a meal. Yeah. Like yeah, and what it does, the machine's they've got has got a backpack on it, so it picks up all the polystyrene. Yeah. The worst thing is, is when you're cutting, obviously that's why the hot wire is a good idea. Yeah. But as soon as you start with polystyrene, yeah, I'll see that. Yeah. you end up with that everywhere. So you imagine that after a week's work. Right. So with the machines they do, it hoovers it all up, so environmentally. Oh, so you can just sweep the old dump. Uh, a big guy, whatever, and it's... Please call us now.